morning everybody uh, as you can see by me we've got some pretty on ominous clouds uh, second day of overnight rain so our uh, harvesting's at a standstill uh, but I just wanted to show you some observations from uh, our first drilled cover crop so uh, plants are beginning to come through now uh, these are drilled uh, not all volunteers you see you've got a vetch growing here and these red stems very red stems a classic of uh, buckwheat so that's good to see um, so I just wanted you to take note of the size of these leaves so let's say pretty close to my thumbnail this field has been combined and then we drilled it and mole ploughed um, it hasn't been rolled uh, the moor's pretty good as far as uh, it's got a, a press wheel on the back for seed soil contact and we were coming back you can see the the wheelings either side of the mole plough so we were going to get quite a lot of uh, soil contact from those so i wasn't too fussed and in fact uh, that's something i want to pick up in the next field i'm sorry the sun has now disappeared behind a bank of clouds but so this field history is failed rape um we came in and planted linseed as a cover crop um, and there was a lot of it, it was under real pressure from ox tongue um, here and you can see the rows now where the drill has planted the cover crop now I think this cover crop is noticeably further advanced we're getting true leaves coming out i guess this is the um oil radish um there's a buckwheat over there Got some the vetches um noticeably more advanced and it was drilled on the same day as that other cover crop uh it's only two fields away um and basically i haven't done anything extra here we haven't rolled it the shear pre, you know um the effect of the drill going through the crop has killed the ox i'm pretty well there are other places where it survives but and we've got some surviving under sown clover which is reassuring um but what is quite nice is that um as a result, we've got some of our friend here. Um, we have got some uh, linseed that's made it through. Not too, you know, it's just nice for a bit more diversity. But what is really interesting to me is um, this concept that when soils are right for the plant, the plant establishes quickly I mean, you can pick up the rows very clearly there now when we sowed the linseed I've got a beautiful stand of linseed next to not far from here planted into the same situation it just never took in this field whereas the cover crop has the over winter cover crop has established faster than in the rape stubble so uh, really interesting uh, observations here. Not sure what it means, but something to share. Evening everybody, uh, Wednesday night, and uh, we're just pulling to a close. So today we've uh, finished one of the fields that was uh, sheep graze and then drilled straight away and nearly finished a field that was drilled in the green and, and if you can remember we did plant counts in the winter and it was that was the field that was grazed and then drilled quite quickly had significantly lower plant counts so it'll be interesting to see the yield maps whether there is significant difference not wishing to steal my own thunder let's have a look at the screen and see what it says to the this summary screen 
so uh, we've done nine hectares so far of this field and it's um, this is flexi wheat it's averaging 7.26 okay so now I've gone back to the previous the fields from earlier today now it was 14 hectares a dry yield of uh, 5.98 so it looks provisionally like it's a, a ton of hectare difference so last week I postulated about compost and whether it was really worthwhile uh, damaging the fields to put on compost especially in light of the high uh, plastic content but I suppose the same could be said about about livestock. We saw this with the plant counts that we're better off waiting for the land to recover post grazing rather than trying to chase chase the sheep with the drill. So interestingly in this block we've also got an opportunity where uh, a field was drilled in January so there's a bit probably a month's delay between grazing and midwinter drilling and then we've got another one where it was a full spring drilling so we've still got plenty of opportunities to have a look at yield response after grazing so there'll be more to follow uh, later in the combining season but it's good this you know we made it we've made some progress it's really catchy weather to this week it hasn't been very enjoyable harvesting conditions so um, it's nice to be back in a seat for once morning everybody Thursday morning and the sun is out so we are I should be combining and I probably will be within an hour but significant rain is forecast for the weekend so on Saturday afternoon Sunday so we are just out trying to get as much cover crop in as possible uh, Henry is out with the moor putting a mixed species cover crop in. I am out putting a monoculture of mustard in. So just blowing it out on with the Cunero. So one of the reasons we can blow it on is because this is baled ground so should have good seed soil contact. And uh, there you go booms out blowing it in we're going for about seven kilos a hectare and we're quite happy with a monoculture it's a relatively short period and um, this is not in any sort of environmental scheme so there are no obligations on us so hence why it's just a straight mustard and it's being grazed by sheep so that's another reason Good afternoon everybody, Friday afternoon um, and uh, we're back on the combine. We managed to dodge the showers last night. Just wanted to show you've got a baler uh, running. So this is being sold to a, a different uh, beef farmer. As you can see, not a lot of bales coming out. That's the story of, of this block we've had. It's been quite interesting actually. What I'm going to try and do is post a picture of a plan of these fields with their the sheep and the drilling dates and then try and uh, superimpose the situation as far as yield is concerned because I think it really tells the picture. This plan helps explain why we grow flexi wheat. Our definition of flexi wheat is a spring wheat variety planted in the autumn. Here you can see both the November planted fields drilled into the green, i.e. without being grazed, yielded 7.3 tonnes per hectare, roughly one tonne less than our winter wheat average, but two tonnes greater than our average spring wheat yield, which is around 5.3 tonnes per hectare. However, the grazed field drilled on the same day yielded 1.3 tonnes less. As they are so close, share the same soil type and weather, the only difference can be the effect of the sheep grazing. Interestingly, the field below 
was drilled later on the 1st of January but yielded 0.3 tonnes more, indicating the length of break between grazing and planting is essential. Finally, the control. True spring wheat yielded the lowest at 2 tonnes, less than the flexi wheat planted into the green. This challenges the sixth and final principle of soil health, including ruminant animals in the rotation. It's certainly something to think about. Baylor's uh, uh, up here somewhere. Now if we turn to the field next door, quite a different story. Now that is wheat after, after a cut, mustard cover crop that wasn't grazed, whereas that one is after grazing. So it's an interesting story that's telling. Uh, this one is drilled, was drilled on, on New Year's Eve, between New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Um, looks all right, it's grown conventionally. And as far as yield goes, let's, uh, I'm just trying to do this left-handed. So there you go, it's just running a shade over seven tons. Um, overall, that sort of in the seven tons range is where I would expect for, for flexi wheat. So um, more about this in a moment. So, so one other observation we made earlier was how the black grass was thicker in between the rows uh, and I'll post a video of that when the crop was younger. Here we are a little bit closer, you can really see it in a strip running down there. But here it's still evident so uh, we're having to cut I don't know if you can see a slight change in the look of the crop here it's not too bad but in other places it's been going flat which for me means a badly set up fertilizer spreader in the fact that it's, it's sending it too wide and this is getting like a double application you can see we've got some issues down here um, but yesterday and last night it was also very evident that there was more black grass there and I just wonder if we're blaming it all on a fertilizer setup but actually it's left over from the black grass and whether the black grass has weakened the plants is certainly obvious in another field that I went to so here you can clearly see that, that this is caused by weeds, this bit of flat crop here, which is exactly what we were talking about, or that could the black grass underneath the crop have caused the lodging, where it was just really thick black grass and it was making the crop uh, lodge. So I wonder if this is having um, a similar effect. Anyway, um, I don't know the answer to that, so uh, just conjecture. But anyway, uh, enjoy your weekend and thank you very much for viewing.